Uh, hello everyone, this is Nevermind the Politics, I'm Machek, and today um, we're here with Ishan, um, who has his own podcast. Um, so before we get into our the stuff we're going to be talking about, would you like to say a bit about that? Oh, hello everybody. Um, thanks Machek for having me on, it's a, it's a pleasure. Um, so yeah, right. as Machek as pointed out, I do have a podcast of my own. It's called All Works of Life. You can find find it on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, uh, Aka, Spotify, basically wherever you get your mm-hmm. uh, podcasts. Um, and so, yeah, as, as the title goes, it's called All Works of Life. So I try to speak with people who I am interested in, uh, the work they kind of do in, in their lives. And it can be people from, as, as I mentioned, all walks of life. So it could be bakers to bankers. It could be sports coaches to politicians policy makers to painters so exactly so it's whatever intrigues me Mm -hmm. i just try to stripe a conversation with them that's that's the kind of thing i want to put forward with my with my yeah that's that's pretty that's really interesting have you had anyone interesting on recently um actually i have i mean um currently most of my guests have been uh for an indian indian audience even though Mm -hmm. all the conversations are in english um, so I generally, I recently had uh, the professor for computer science uh, and technology at IIT Kanpur, which is oh, wow. one of the premier, ins- one of the premier institutions in India. Mm-hmm. And we talked about artificial intelligence, and we moved on to tangents such as more mystical stuff and and, and things about, let's say, um, just 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 more of uh, us as human beings and 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 what we make of our morta- mortality. So wow. yeah, those are some of the conversations that really interested me. But other than that, I also speak to uh, the last conversation was with this um, lady called uh, Sa- Sanam Buksani. I'd really recommend the podcast. Mm-hmm. It was about feminism and what are some of the misconceptions about, let's say, feminism. Because many people pointed towards pseudo liberalism or pseudo feminism, which we mm-hmm. felt that it'd be a very unhealthy for society to go down into. So, yeah. Okay. Well, that's great because, I mean, we're going to be talking about uh, a bit about that. Um... Well, today we're going to be talking about uh, equality, what that means, um, what we kind of uh, want from society in that sense, stuff like the differences between the sexes. And yeah, so I guess like um, first thing to, to, to really talk about is, yeah, what what do you think, like what, what is equality and what sort of equality are you looking um, you know, for in, in the world? Right, that, that's, that's a great question that you've pointed towards me. So first of all, I mean, it, it's... I would say it's difficult for me to, let's say, come down to define equality because I'm just a first year at university. But some of the thoughts I generally have towards equality is that we, sh- and I've, I've pointed this towards conversations we have had in person as well, mm-hmm. Magic, that I feel that we should always try for um, equality in opportunity mm-hmm. and not um, equality in outcome. Because I feel that for sure that may be a very uh, ideological idea for us as society to put forward mm-hmm. however i feel that practically that's very 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 difficult to achieve yeah but then again i also have i also have viewpoints that i am an idealist as such so i wouldn't say that anything that's virtually impossible for us to achieve i wouldn't say that we as a society shouldn't aim towards achieving it mm-hmm. as a result i think that if we move towards equality of opportunity we would we would then sort of create a create a society that is optimal and 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 by what i mean by optimal is uh, people being good at what they are so being good athletes being good politicians mm-hmm. being good doctors so basically uh, ha- having great people in different uh, areas uh, of life and this is where i come to my argument uh, about how societies are hierarchical hierarchical in in nature and obviously i think we're going to talk about jordan peterson a lot in this yeah. conversation yeah, gonna... he, he shares yeah so he shares a lot uh, in this and that's and generally I, I i admire him a lot and and i get a lot of inspiration from him and i do agree with what he says so i do feel that societies are inherently hierarchical and if you do let's say on one day create some sort of uh, uh, create a new sport or creates a new piece of art mm-hmm. there are genuinely going to be one percent of the world or five percent of the world who are genuinely going to be great at it so uh, an example he gives or example that's often uh, pointed towards is let's say if we created basketball today there are obviously going to be five percent of the world who are going to be really good basketball players does that mean that the rest does that mean we exclude the rest no but we should really appreciate uh, what we have with the, with the 5%. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, one hundred. So I guess I guess that's that's that some of, those are some of my rambling thoughts of what I feel society should go down into when I talk about equality. Yeah, I think I agree with a lot a lot of the stuff you said. So I, in the same way, I I don't I don't really value equality of outcome. I think that's a a pretty misguided way of looking at things, and I don't actually think that uh, many people take uh, that view. I think primarily where people kind of diverge in opinion is um whether or not is is it what they believe equality of opportunity to to actually be um because yeah i, I 100 percent um recognize there there will be differences um in 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 people that make people better athletes that make people um better at certain subjects and and at certain uh, um well at certain uh, professions um i in my opinion however like um equality of opportunity uh would essentially i, I think uh, to basically i feel like most of those issues come um more from like a more from like a are pretty are pretty malleable they come more from like a social rather than like a biological um yeah. thing as to like the um as to like hier- hierarchies in society i in my opinion i think it's it's probably best to like essentially um as much as we can recognize how good someone is at a certain sport, and and I think overall, like in certain categories, there will always be hierarchies. There will always be someone who's better than another at a specific thing. I just don't think that should translate into like a society wide hierarchy. So like I I don't think it's fair to say like this job is better than another job, or like this sort of person right. is better than another sort of person. That's um that's kind of where where I come down to with that. No, I feel that's that's a good um, way to look at it because I don't feel, and I think my mom talks about it, and I think many older people who I generally speak to, and I mean, it's pretty common for people of the younger generation not to pay heed to a lot, a lot of the stuff that their relatives speak to them, or at least that's how it's it is in the Indian context. So they tell mm-hmm. me that no job in the world is small as such. Every job is valuable. Yeah. I do feel that way. I feel that it doesn't matter if you're a plumber or a physicist. I feel that you do you do contribute to society, which is which makes society what it is today mm-hmm. and i feel that for society to function properly i think we need people from um various different sectors as mm-hmm. you mentioned so yeah I, I do i do believe in that yeah uh, and and i think i think i really agree with this idea that you, we really we really need people to have as much uh free choice as much equality of opportunity it comes from the liberal idea that only um the only a person has enough information about themselves to optimize their yeah. own happiness so yeah. um i definitely believe that as m- as we have to make sure there are as many choices for people as possible um reg- like so they can themselves uh, discover what they want to do in in life and i think um i think fundamentally so if i kind of just talk about my um idea of what equality of opportunity is and for what, sure, for what sure. that entails yeah. because um i think that's where we'll probably have a a little bit of disagreement or maybe not yeah. but um essentially for me equality of of opportunity comes down to not only like legal barriers or like right. um or or you know educational barriers and stuff like that so like women not being able to go into stem subjects at a certain point like um i think a lot of our uh a lot of our parents and grandparents encountered that at least in the uk um and also social factors so for instance the fact that um men uh, are just more encouraged to go into those fields when you look at like big physicists and stuff you see einstein you see like um you, you know people like that you don't there's not really uh this this wide range of female representation of course there is like uh mary curie and everything but um uh and that and that applies to a to a lot of jobs i feel like go on like polit- politics for instance i think there's uh very little like um representation for some people in those fields um and yeah, I think in general, like it comes from when you, when you're a child, when you're a child and you have um, certain uh, like girls will play around with dolls, they'll get given dolls yep. and stuff. They'll um um or and like when you ask them like what they want to become in the future, if if their parents are like if if they'll they'll kind of go off sometimes what their parents do, and so I feel like all of those factors need to be uh, taken into consideration. So kind of like in an idealistic sense i would love for society to be structured in a way where um we don't kind of enforce these sorts of stereotypes and stuff onto 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 children and let children themselves decide what they want to what they want to do in life without um those sorts of influences as well uh what what do you think about that i get where you're coming from but i i wouldn't say i have the same point of view and 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 why i'd say that is because let's say and I've shared this example um, recently with many groups, and I think you were there as well. Mm-hmm. So I spoke about, let's say, 
it's always great that we we promote uh, as i mentioned equal uh, e- equal opportunities and equality and opportunity however that we should always be aware that when we are promoting these things when we are telling our girls in society and telling that we shouldn't uh, that you aren't only uh, you shouldn't only um, let's say limit yourself to the liberal arts or you shouldn't only focus on one uh, particular career stream mm-hmm. what we end up seeing is that and, and probably the best example is with scandinavian countries who've actually implemented this on a ground level and statistically this has been proven that when when the scandinavian countries actually promoted um, equality and opportunity so the so the girls were able to choose more uh, they 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 got more options to choose basically what they wanted to go into in further education and career choices there was a decrease in the number of women who went into stem and um, and and subjects that you would traditionally associate them not to go into mm-hmm. so and 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 i really emphasize this right there were a decrease in the number of people, uh, women who actually went into let's say stem and, uh, uh, and 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 these sorts of subjects and there was an increase in the women who who actually went into the liberal arts mm-hmm. so I feel that it is essential for us to promote uh, that it is all it, it isn't necessary for women to only go into one particular career stream but I feel that biologically we are um, I know I, this is this is a very controversial take but I think biologically um we are we are made in a way that we are different and men are let's say attracted to more materialistic things whereas women are attracted to people and and want to know more about people so i don't think why that's bad but that doesn't mean that they is a cis woman or they cannot be a man who is in social sciences but we should not as corporations or government inti- institutions who actually come to hire from these institutions then say that we need 50 men and 50 women because i think that's not the best way to go into things because when you say something like that then you may not get the best 50 engineer uh, you may not get the best 100 engineers because you're limiting um because you're limiting it uh, by introducing um by introducing a sort of rule to your to your um hiring process so i that's where i i would like to put forward things yeah so um a few things when um so when, with the hiring quota thing i'm not a massive uh, fan of uh, of quotas and stuff like that but uh, if we're talking about like affirmative action and stuff like that yeah. primarily yeah. what happens in those cases is if you have like two CVs uh and they ha- they're very very similar they're pretty much on the same level and one of the person comes from like a a minority background that right. the, uh, the it just requires them to pick the person from a minority background just because they that person would have gone through more barriers uh, to get to that same place um yeah. so it's almost like an additional qualification it's like i had to struggle more to uh, get to the same level as this other person and that's kind of all so it wouldn't actually it doesn't really affect whether or not you pick like the best person for the for the job because it, it, you will pick a person who has like the, the same qualification the same um cv pretty much as well um as to like biological differences in gender um i did some reading into this because it's um it's a pretty interesting topic um yeah. and and uh, i i've i'll just read this it's from um um it's from our world and data and and they they did sure. a, yeah. yeah they did a study into um basically biological differences and they said that um there is evidence supporting the fact that statistically speaking men and women tend to differ in some key aspects including psychological attributes that may affect labor market outcomes there is no yep. consensus on exact on the exact weight that nurture and nature have in determining these differences but whatever the exact weight the evidence does show that these attributes are strongly malleable regardless of the origin these differences can only explain a modest part of the uh, gender pay gap so basically what what they're talking about is the fact that there there are differences and and as and as you said in the in in the in the uh, sweet in the scandinavian example um when uh, what can i just ask when when you say uh, gender equality or like choices were increased how did do you know how the scandinavian government did that what were like the policies they put in place uh i'm not really sure i'm just i'm just quoting from what i've heard from jordan peterson but um i think i think it's widely known in society that let's say scandinavians are the best uh, are the best in terms of gender equality or what let's say the liberals would mm-hmm. say that they're probably the best in terms of gender equality but since Uh, but yeah i can't really say what particular policies yeah. there were because i yeah. haven't really read a lot about it yeah that's yeah. okay because i uh, i mean in in so the way i'd look at it is if in fact uh, sweden essentially came out and said mm. you know we're going to promote um people the into getting whatever jobs they want they can make choices um you know however they want to and 
you know, women who have been, you know, I, I'd say that women, like, it makes sense that women would pick jobs that are more stereotypically associated with them, just because that's yeah. kind of the, that's the, that's how the society is structured. I'd say that it's more of like a social thing rather than a biological thing. I'd say because um, in society, we kind of expect women to go into certain roles. Right. And um, in, in, in school, we, that's kind of like the way, uh, the, the way we talk about things. I remember when, um, when we had like a, a, a career days, um, you'd have a lot of like men come in talking about how they were lawyers or they worked in finance and stuff like that and in engineering. And then you'd have like a woman come in talking about how, you know, she was a nurse or, or another woman come in talking she works with children and stuff like that. And I feel like that um, that is uh, something that really, you know, sticks into 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 people's minds. And it, it kind of this study goes in, goes further into this and it shows um it talks about uh, the the idea that like boys are better at maths um, and they looked at the yeah. data. And they found that actually, like educational attainment and like the way that um, uh, that women, how well women do in maths, is actually completely dependent on um, on on the society you're in. Um, right. So it has it has this graph of like um, essentially um, of like men men and women proficiency level, and it is very as as it said in the data, it's very malleable. So this this is something that isn't like set in stone. It's not like um there is some there is going to be some sort of biological aspect that 100 percent men and women are different but this biological aspect is is i think over exaggerated by by a lot of people um like jordan right. peterson in a sense right i i totally i totally understand the whole aspect of nature versus nurture and i'm, I'm a big I'm, I, I really respect people like charles darwin who actually speak about this so they say that it doesn't matter how bright um I, i'm paraphrasing so i may uh, mm-hmm. miss a few words from the code but he says that it doesn't matter how bright the child is he may be einstein or he he may be lionel messi but until and unless you don't put him in the right environment he will just turn out to be a normal kid so i can mm-hmm. understand that if you have let's say a girl who's born but if she's brought up with some certain values then she will inherently want to choose those sort of values later on in life is that mm-hmm. what you is that where you're coming from yeah i mean pr- primarily it's just the I- i'm concerned of like the the social attitudes we have so in my opinion right. as a society right. um we shouldn't i don't think we should um push um either sex into either job i don't think that right. you know we should have a society where men are considered better at this and women are considered better at this I think right. I think we should we should work on that kind of liberal idea of letting an individual through their life experiences and through what they think they are better at and what they um, you know achieve in life picking their picking their roles. I don't think there should be like a social pressure um, to go right. into either you know whatever job you want. You know. Yeah, I totally agree with that, and I mean uh, there was this other point. Yeah, so one of the reasons I feel it is sort of biological is because let's say when I talk about let's say. Um, uh, girls wanting to go into let's say a motherhood so they they wanting to become mothers so mm-hmm. and and it's well documented well documented in the literature that many people say that why are why are the most richest of people in the world and why are the most successful ceos only men mm-hmm. yeah, and and i say that is because i'm not saying that women don't and and this is because i genuinely feel that after a point women women will compete really hard for getting let's say that promotion in a corporate job or getting that bill passed in government or or whatever they may uh, f- whatever they may find in in their particular jobs however there comes a time when they reach let's say 35 36 whatever the age may be when they say that okay i've made so much money However, I really want to settle down and have a family of my own. And now mm-hmm. we as society cannot take that away because that is biological, right? We can't we can't just expect men to have babies if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And obviously, people have people have talked about let's say uh, this aspect of um, having paternal leaves and not only maternal leaves, which mm-hmm. I think is a good way to go down into. But I genuinely feel that after a point, women and and this is again a very controversial take, and many mm-hmm. people have actually said that. No, you shouldn't be thinking along these lines. But I feel, uh, but people, but when I put this forward is that pe- uh, women actually generally want to settle down and have a family of their own. And this comes back to my argument of why men are more materialistic. They're drawn towards um, newer and newer things. So uh, that's why the, the hardest workers, uh, the, the CEOs I talk about, it doesn't matter how much money they have after a point because they genuinely don't care about the money. They just want to, they just want to create the next big thing. They just want to be in the limelight, and that's and that's what it's and that's what separates. Um, I, I think 
the men and women and that's not to say that um women are wrong in the approach they're taking i feel that it's well within their rights to uh, choose whatever they feel is right for them uh, but then we as society shouldn't say that um there should be the uh, women ceo should be paid much more just because just because they are women ceos i don't think that's the right way to go down into i think ability is what um, we should judge people on yeah well, yeah i i do think 100% we should look at um the ability of people but uh, but just to the the ceo thing um i think i think the majority of the the the, the wealthiest the most successful people are are, are are men isn't isn't really much to do with um i, I don't think it's to do with their sex but if you, if you think about it so um for for generations and generations um women weren't were, I don't think were even allowed to own property for for a long time right. they weren't allowed to vote yeah. so I think a lot, so a lot of like dynasties and a lot of the uh, the the wealthiest families in the world they come from obviously ge- generations of men going into that and, and in in a society where for long periods of time you would only see well legally it would only be men in those positions of power in politics and in uh as ceos i think it definitely um puts this sort of social pressure on on, on women yeah. like it, if you go into that sort of environment if you are a woman that actually manages to get up there it becomes very difficult to um you are the minority in that case you, you are you are going to be the different uh the different person there and i think that definitely puts a lot of pressure on, on, on people to well either not go into those jobs or maybe not um be as successful in 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 those jobs there down the line and i think um i found a um there's a, there's a line about how um, men are you know explicitly uh, so essentially the as part of the gender pay back, pay gap is explained by men actually pursuing um, higher paid jobs and and, uh, and negotiating yeah. for higher pay uh, pay and um, it essentially the this study found that um, that although men were more likely to negotiate uh, than women when there was no explicit statement that wages were negotiable the gender difference disappeared. Um, and even reversed when it was explicitly stated that wages were negotiable. Um, so uh, essentially, women like if so, in in this case, if it said that wages were negotiable, um, you know, women might actually be able to negotiate more. They just don't. Um, women in in this situation just won't make that won't make that step um, if it's not explicitly stated or isn't you know to to right. to then go about doing that. And I think um, there are little things like that that we could put in place that would that, that just completely, you know, um, make the issue a lot, uh, a, a lot, a lot simpler. And I think um, I, you'd have to like give me evidence to suggest that um, women, you know, don't um, aren't as good at, at certain things, or because I, I feel like a lot of the databases suggest that in in, in reality it's um, it's it's not that simple. Um, and, and and a lot of these things are, are kind of a lot more social than biological. Um, and when right. it comes to caregiving and paternal leave, I think it would be very it would be um, a, a good thing to to find to to make it so that you know uh, uh, women and men take turns um, you know raising yeah. children. Because yeah. um, I think it, I think a lot of the issue comes down to um, if you look at data, I think a lot of the um, I think having both parents involved in in a child's life is very very yeah. important for future for future development so i think that would like that would not only help you know reduce the the gender pay gap because you'd have um you'd have equal time taken off of work it would also mean that you know a child gets to bond with their father more which i think is only a good thing you know yeah i mean i totally agree with the points that you've put forward let's say having a uh, baton leave or having 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 a scheme in place where um uh, both the parents get equal time or sort of or, or we can for us for us as society to achieve that sort of equal uh, equality in time that they spend with their with their children while even uh, continuing their profession. So I think that's a really good road to go down into. I think we can talk more about that if you want to. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean the point that's uh, the point that you raised um, regarding parenting and and how it's really important uh, for for a, for a child growing up to have both their um, parents with them. So mm-hmm. I mean, many people talk about let's say uh, children who 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 are raised um, with a single parent come out really different um in the way they are in, in, mm-hmm. in their approach to life in, in in how they end up um in, in in let's say the success barometers that one puts out let's say intelligence um or whatever you want to put forward there uh, compared to let's say an individual who is raised by both uh 
uh, father and mother mm-hmm. and this comes out, comes down into let's say tangents or questions about uh, monogamy and, and and those sorts of thing mm-hmm. and and why we as society should um raise those as 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 primary focuses mm-hmm. yeah i think uh, yeah i think a lot of, i think it's definitely um it's it's kind of uh it's it's something that's very uh, conclusive in in research that um children yep. who don't have both parents in their lives do um end up having um essentially lower uh, life outcomes later down the line so i think yep. definitely encouraging um the you know both parents being active in a person's life um is something that's that's very very important um and you know i i, I and i think that's something our society could do a lot better at because i think uh, in a lot of cases um, you have these situations where um, you know men are seen as as care uh, as the as people who are meant to provide. They're not around the family as much, um, yep. uh, and and I think that's that's definitely very harmful for um, for for life for life outcomes of of children. Um, and yeah, I I, I think uh, this this comes back to like again social pressures of like if if you, if you as a man are are going out to work and or, or like are are caring for a child instead of going out to work you are um looked down on in a sense it's like if if like uh your your wife is earning more than you you're you're looked down as if yeah. you're like some emasculated and i think those sorts of attitudes um are, are really quite harmful to both men and women um right because men have this pressure of of you need to sacrifice everything for for, for your family you have to go out you can never you don't if you um, you don't see your kids as much. You have to just work that nine to five every day to to provide for them. Um, and women have this sort of pressure on them that they have to stay uh, with their kids. They have to, you know, take care of the house for their for their husband. And and you know, you, we see this. It, it gets better uh, over time, but this is something that's common even like among our parents and, and stuff like that. So, uh, I think those are things that our society could definitely improve on. No, I I totally get from where you're coming from, and I, and I see this because like um I spent time studying in the UK um because I'm I'm studying at Loughborough University, mm-hmm. but I I I live in India, so and most of okay it's improving because I live in let's say uh, uh, Delhi, so it's 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 probably one of the most advanced uh, or more modern cities in India. Yeah. But if you but still I can see I mean there is there are se- several if not numerous um houses that still that still hold those traditional values of how the 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 man of of the family if yeah. you may say is 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 asked to provide for the family and if he doesn't then it's just it's just it's just a taboo in society that oh look at him he he he's just uh, staying at home um and 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 give uh, doing the caregiving mm-hmm. and, and 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 the lady is, is is trying to go out and and earn a living so I I do feel that this is one of the points that you raise that it it, it has to come down for us. For there need to there needs to be a societal change for and only then um, will these changes actually take forward. Yeah. And the only way we can do that is by creating awareness by by actually talking about these things to be okay and and these things to be um, totally legitimate in society. I mean it's it's like any other movement I, I'd say because uh, some of the things I really care about is that I'm I'm a vegan so if mm-hmm. if I feel that I want to pr- I want to promote that idea I- idea because I feel that many people do not do not aren't aware of veganism because they don't know what veganism is and yeah. i feel that until and unless you don't spread the word out there you you aren't going to get uh, years uh, you aren't going to get years uh, who are going to hear what you want to say it's the same thing with any other movement i'd say with with uh, with the lgbtq community mm-hmm. or anything like that until and unless you don't get your voice heard and that's why I, and that's why i say that um healthy conversation is the only way for society to progress i think until and unless uh, people actually sit down and hear themselves out i think that's one of the primary reasons why we ad- um, advance a society and and that's why i really feel strongly about aspects such as cancel culture mm-hmm. i feel that's really really harmful for society and i feel that everyone thinks that um, being associated to the left is fashionable and of course i mean i'd say that i am more left than i am right mm-hmm. but some people just take it um to a whole another level and then that's why i talk about things as like pseudo pseudo liberalism and uh, being r- a radical leftist where you would not even entertain uh, what the other side has to say mm-hmm. and that's where i'd say that you aren't even holding true to the ideology of being a left winger in that sense you are taking forward a whole right wing ideology which is no different to what uh, the kkk would do or the rss would do in india so yeah that's 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 what 
I'd say. Yeah, I, I mean, I, 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 I agree in a lot of ways. I, I definitely think that um, there, there are aspects of of cancel culture that are really damaging, especially because um, a lot of a lot of things get taken out of context. A lot of uh, situations um, yeah. will will basically lead to the ending of people's lives. And then it, it, what what turns out is that you know they the the either the the clip is is taken out of context or there's more to for the sure. story yeah. or stuff like that. And I think yeah, I think that definitely doesn't um, look good look good for the left and um and and kind of yeah not not engaging with with the ideas of 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 certain people i mean i think i think it depends what you're talking about so i think you and i would um would both agree that like it 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 would it's irresponsible to platform people like um like flat earthers and people like that Hmm. um in like a in like it's like it's like when there's so this happens a lot with um this happens a lot with like the environment, the the environment debate. So you'll have like um, a, a a panel, um, a t- uh, a news panel, and you'll have like the news presenter, and on either side there'll be like a climate scientist, and then yeah. there'll be like yeah. a, just a random person that like doesn't believe in climate change, and then it, yeah. it, they they put because there's these there's these two people, and because uh, this news channel needs to seem like they're not biased, but they're they're basically what they're doing is they're showing these two people as if they're on an equal footing when the climate scientist yeah. is just way more um it has is way more right about about the issue and it has way more grounding so like in my opinion like a, a better way of doing that would basically having 90 you know 99 um of these uh because like i think it's like 99 percent of of, cli- of scientists or climate scientists agree that you know climate change is a thing you have to have 99 mm. of them and just one other person it, it's it's not as um and i think in society we um because we have this biased well this bias towards being unbiased um y- yeah you will yeah. tend to platform people that just really like they don't have a they don't have an argument um and yeah and, uh, but i but i think definitely the left does struggle engaging in in ideas with with right wing people they're like they're very quick to i mean right wingers do this as well but um yeah, but yeah. but it's but people are very quick to engage in name calling or assume um certain things about people they're talking to and i think that is very damaging 100% yeah no magic i totally i mean this is one of the things that i really propagate in, in my friend circles because I mean that's that's the whole that's the whole idea of identity politics in my opinion. Everyone's just in this whole gotcha game that's saying that oh look that, that, that's where you're wrong and this and this and that. And I think it's really, I, I think it's really uh, exhausting after a point where you're where you're just constantly looking at it could be the left uh, uh, radical leftist people saying that oh you got that pronoun wrong or it, I think that if you if you're really taking such stringent uh, rules on society, I think it'd be really difficult for even us to construct sentences. After a point, and yeah. when you talk about, let's say, the whole um, issue with media channels and and news channels rather, and I'm presenting two people with contrasting opinions. That's, I mean, first of all, I I, I really have a problem with um, traditional media houses and traditional news sources because I don't feel that it's right. Uh, it's the right way for any any individual, be it a politician, be it a scientist, be it um, some respected uh, individual, to even come out on uh, media and have that six minute soundbite to put forward whatever they have to say. And that's the only thing that they have because uh, the media has to put forward advertisements. They have to get all the corporate stuff done. So I think what happens is that the individuals have to really articulate themselves to to really perfect what they have to say in that small time period. Mm-hmm. That's why that was one of my primary reasons I started my podcast was that I feel that through a podcast, uh, when they're... Um, when there is a time a time limit where, where some people may have a time limit, but it's still a much longer conversation than you may see on uh, national television, which which allows individuals to get deeply into topics that they probably aren't aren't able to on national television. So that's one of my that's one of the reasons I I, I propagate podcasts and 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 just healthy conversation in general. But if I just have to let's say linger on this point mm-hmm. uh, about media sources. I genuinely do not know where I get my news from nowadays. I mean, there are a few, there were a few uh, newspaper publications I went to, like the New York Times, if I wanted to get mm-hmm. uh, news about the world and maybe US politics for a bit. But even that has uh, has has an agenda driven to it. I mm-hmm. mean, obviously, we, we as individuals understand that there cannot be anything. It'd be very difficult, almost idealistic to say that nothing has a bias in it. But still, like, I mean, for institutions such as the WHO uh, putting forward 
not commenting on the whole uh, Taiwan China situation and then YouTube saying that no other doctor or medical professional can put out information if they aren't um following the WHO guidelines mm. i feel that after a point we just don't know who to trust and and that's and that's where i mean i see this in india myself um i think india is moving quite towards uh, the whole approach that china and north korea are taking i know it may be very difficult for you to comprehend that because you may not be so well aware about the modi government and indian politics but mm-hmm. um staying in india um just observing everything over here i feel that's that's the whole situation in the world i think that right wing politics has become very fashionable if you look at the us turkey mm-hmm. china india and this whole geopolitical aspect that they're trying to put forward is i'd say a little unhealthy yeah. i mean again people people uh, disagree but yeah yeah i think th- there's a there's a lot to talk about there and i think um there's j- there's definitely extremes on 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 both sides when it comes to cancel culture i don't think there's i don't think very many people in person will um will you know stop being friends with you or or, or criticize you um for like mis yeah. misgendering someone for instance or or saying stuff right. like that i think a, a lot of these issues primarily come from um the fact that a lot of our political interactions are on social media are in like a combative sense a lot of our political interactions are like reacting to stuff people say and commenting and yeah. i think definitely yeah. a kind of person to person or like a, lo- a longer conversational like good faith con- uh, of uh, aspect of of um, talking about politics is definitely needed and i think the first thing we really need to do is destigmatize talking about politics with our friends with our families yeah, yeah. and stuff like that um because it's a very important issue and um really what what en- ends up happening is you relegate these conversations to yeah. to like um to well bad faith online conversation i think that's that's really problematic as to like the media um i have a really i have a massive issue with like um I guess a- attacking the media as a whole and like the whole mainstream um, media uh, narrative and dislike for it because the media, although it does have its biases and those have to be recognized, um, it-, it provides an absolutely vital role in ensuring that governments um, and and other institutions are held held to account for their actions. So without the media, right. without like investigative wings and journalists um, uh, looking at all these things, we wouldn't know what's going on in the world. We wouldn't know what our governments are doing right, what our governments are doing wrong. And without the media, you you essentially just um, have the government being able to, you know, or free media, you have the government being able to, you know, you do propaganda um, without, without, you know, uh, restraint. And that's why I think the free media is, is a really important thing. Uh, institutions like the BBC, things like that, um, and mm. like, it, it are, they're very, very very important um I, and yeah I, I think when it comes to news sources because I, I i tend to, what's important in my opinion because I, I i do have like a vast array of uh, of news sources i use it's important yeah. to make sure that you recognize each news source's agenda so like um one of the so like the, the most obvious example of this is like russia today rt it's yeah. um <laughs> it, it has a very 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 clear bias it will not say anything bad about russia and it has a very clear um clear um view of trying to make like the west the us the uk look as bad as possible both on like a geo in like a geopolitical landscape and when it comes to their internal politics so once you know that you can then look at those stories and through through a lens of they are exaggerating these parts or they are um taking or they're not talking about this other aspect and i think that helps and then you can and then it's important to to go through a bunch of news sources you can look at the bbc you can look at the new york times yeah. like stuff like places like the telegraph like a more right-wing um stuff so that you you know that um you, you have like a wide array of, uh, of of opinions about certain uh about aspects of um i think a lot of i think a lot of the issue with um with how we consume media is that we get caught in these kind of echo chambers where we have people agreeing with us and not that many people telling us or, or challenging us on our beliefs and i think that's a massive issue I think I think that's the crux of it Machek I mean when you talk about let's say we only wanting to hear what pleases us in that if if you may and you yeah. clearly pointed out the aspect of free media and that's what I would propagate I mean uh, the fact that when I talk about hierarchies I obviously understand that so, so societies in my opinion are hierarchical in structure mm-hmm. and that means that there can be a sort of tyranny that let's say any institution can go down into and it's and it's a role for us as citizens is a role for us as society to question them when we feel that they're doing something wrong mm-hmm. but my whole but but my whole understanding is that 
when we move into more right wing politics when we move into let's say a more um, authoritarian regime mm-hmm. is that we don't get these media houses pointing fingers at the government because it is what the government wants to put forward i mean i i think it's not uh, at such a large scale in the uk but in india i mean that's what i talked about let's say the modi government i'd say that any newspaper publication you hold up or any tv channel you 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 put on there's the same there's the same thing that's 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 being playing about yeah. and 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 it's the same in china i mean china it's it's, it's to a far greater extent that journalists are just disappearing uh, in thin air and 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 scientists uh, who may say that um, uh, the the corona virus is is a lab uh, is a lab leak disease uh, are just just not found in a week's time so i feel that that's that's really unhealthy because when mm-hmm. you say that obviously everyone would encourage that we should question the government for the things they do but when when there isn't an entity for for us to question like there isn't a media house that's questioning yeah. and there's only one streamlined um public uh, there's just one uh, streamlined thought that's been put forward which is what the government wants mm-hmm. then i think that's uh, that's uh, unhealthy because we as citizens won't know the other side and we would think that whatever the government is doing is correct because yeah. we think that there isn't really an alternative so i'm not really introduced to a new chain of thought i this mean is something that's sorry just just sorry just to linger on this thought yeah yeah just to just to put forward an example so if you look at the arab countries why is it such an why is it such a, a taboo subject when you talk about things such as lgbtq uh, mm-hmm. or uh, gender equality over there because there's a very interesting fact is that most of the books that are written in western uh, societies about gender equality feminism lgbtq and these sort of uh, let's say more progressive topics mm-hmm. they aren't really they aren't put forward in arab countries in text they, there is no way for these countries to yeah. for the women in these countries for the uh, for the individuals of in these countries to read uh, this material mm-hmm. and as a result they feel that oh maybe if i am gay or if if if, if i'm not straight then there's something wrong with me mm-hmm. as a result that's 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 my understanding of it yeah and i mean this is like this is fundamentally one of the one of the main reasons i'm really i'm really scared about this kind of this um this uh, this evolution of of the way we look at media in the western world yeah. i think yeah. um attacks uh, by trump on mainstream media like the fake news stuff um even by um, by you know the the uk government um when when they accuse the media of lying and they yeah. they just generalize because there of course there are moments where like certain journalists or certain um or certain news articles may have falsehoods in them but to generalize mm. that onto the entire media is really dangerous because it leads people to not to to distrust uh, those sources when they criticize the government um and mm. and essentially just just absorb this propaganda and i completely understand yeah. where you're coming from because as much as like um I I I don't I haven't really lived there for a very long time. I am very I'm quite familiar with 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 Poland with, where I was born. Right. And yeah. um in in that it's one of the like up and coming right wing kind of populist um countries where yeah. the the media is really quite quite stringently controlled there. Um it's not as it's not as overt maybe as China or or places like Russia. Um mm. but um as soon as the new government was elected loads of these little news channels um started getting a lot more sympathetic towards them you had um mm. you, you had an issue where um one of uh, there was a radio show where um they do like a list of the top songs of like the week or like the month or whatever it is and yeah. and the top song that won uh, at one point was a, a song critical of the current government and it was instantly removed um and mm. it, and and stuff like that it's it's really dangerous it, it essentially um again leads to these sort of echo chambers where where a lot of people don't see the bad parts of their governments they only see like yeah. the, the positive side and and yeah that's 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 the road down to to authoritarianism and and it's it's very very dangerous 100% like this is this is one of my main fears um about what's happening in 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 the in the western world with with populism and um and attacks on the mainstream media and stuff i think it's really dangerous Yeah I think I think you've hit the nail on the head over there I mean when I speak to so when I was at when I I mean I just came back to India because my parents wanted me back uh, during the whole pandemic situation mm-hmm. but when I was uh, at Lovepur and I was just speaking to some of my Chinese friends and I asked them about what they feel about the the whole government structure I mean some of the things I was pretty forward they weren't even aware of it I mean and mm-hmm. and, and, and the things and the things uh, and and i and i got to know that whatever they search um is actually streamlined by the government so they have 
a sort of different application for applications mm-hmm. such as Google, Instagram, or wherever we go to our social media platforms, there's already a separate thing that's already built, which 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 is which is garnered, which is in which is in line with what the government wants. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean. I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I'd probably feel very peculiar if um, I'd go to, let's say, a foreign land and there'd be some someone else who's actually telling me about my country or my yeah. government, which I totally don't know about. And I feel that, and that could be, and I don't know, that could be really, I don't know how to phrase it, but that could be really harmful uh, on a societal level or a scientific level where, I'm, where I may feel that, oh, maybe... The, what I was, whatever I was being fed was actually not the right thing. Mm-hmm. But okay, so just to raise another point over here, so it's it's. I, I think that this is obviously a, a very grave concern in, in the world we live in today. Mm-hmm. But another thing, the, another thing that I feel really strongly about is that I, I'd say I'm not as religious, and I do believe a lot in science. Yeah. But what what happens is that there's this whole propagation of science as the new religion. Mm-hmm. which i don't think is what science actually stood for and this is the the whole argument of the whole co- uh, cancel culture thing i was p- uh, trying to put forward mm-hmm. is that the whole the, the crux of what science was built upon was that we question the things um we question whatever we may find in society or in the world mm-hmm. and that's how we come to conclusions but now often what what's happening is that we aren't allowed to question because just because it's a respected individual who's giving out this information we just have to gulp it down. I don't see that it's any different to what a religious dogma in that sense. Do you do, do you have any particular thoughts around science as a religion? Yeah, I mean, if I, I think, even maybe call that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think um, so. So science, I think fundamentally, um, is 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 nothing to do with with morality. I think that's the first thing to say. Any any science is completely descriptive. It it only tells you what is. It doesn't tell you what should be. Um, essentially so i think that's very important to recognize you can't use science to justify um your like prescriptive um uh, statements or your or or your solutions to certain to certain issues that's pure that's purely subjective however when we're talking about um when we're talking about science is like like not being able to question certain certain aspects of, of science i think that's yeah it's it's important but um i think i think because we're in a society where there's some topics that are very very complicated and they're very um it is difficult um, to have conversations like that with with people who, so so I guess my my main example is like um and this is an extreme example but it kind of illustrates my point um is like fl- right. flat earthers um if you put mm-hmm. a sit a flat earther with um with a with a with like a, a scientist who who's actually who studied this and can and, and and can kind of has those arguments all of the yeah. arguments that the um the scientist is working on pretty much every single one of them is beyond kind of the the scope of 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 the of the person who believes in a flat earth they have like yeah. the, the fundamental assumptions that that they believe in are so like fundamentally different so i think when i think what's very important when we um when we talk about these topics and i think it's definitely 100 percent needed science requires you to question every single yeah. result because that's the only yeah. way um we, like we once believed the earth was flat we once believed that um you know the sun revolves around the earth all of these things um were were mainstream like um and, like beliefs that then uh c- people questioned and and we came to new conclusions so that's definitely like that's essential but i think the the main thing we need to consider when we're having these conversations when we're giving people platforms is we need to make sure that our like baseline assumptions are kind of the language we speak um is is the same because yeah. um it's very difficult and and I and I've had the conversations with um with with people who for instance um believe that like certain races are superior to other races I've had uh, with, with like neo nazis and stuff like that and the the kind wow. of the, the language that that they speak is so fundamentally different to to any of our like preconceptions and assumptions that um it's it's very difficult when they um kind of uh w- when they challenge like mainstream narratives these people um they do so from like from from a platform that just doesn't align with with with, with reality and with with like the the you know uh the way we talk about certain topics and i think that's that's kind of the main thing that needs to be uh, needs to be addressed i think we fundamentally need to kind of be speaking in the same language um w- with the people we talk to um to to have these discussions um like that's yeah sorry sorry i think that's that's a really interesting point and i think 
what I boil that down to is doctrination. And I feel that, um, let's say, I'm not sure if you've heard about this person. So I'm forgetting his name. Beg your pardon. But mm-hmm. so there was this person on the Joe Rogan experience. It's, it's a great podcast. It's probably one of the best, biggest podcasts in the world. Yeah. So, yeah. So there was this guy. I'm not really, I'm, I'm forgetting his name. So he spoke to members of the KKK and mm-hmm. just had a conversation with them. So this person who was speaking to the members of the KKK was a black person. Right? Mm-hmm. And he, he was a musician. And uh, these uh, and he saw some of these members of the KKK attending his um, his concerts and his yeah. and his performances. And he just had, let's say, uh, a drink with them and spoke to them of why they believe in this ideology. And it, it was because they, uh, some of those KKK members realized that they weren't really exposed to the other side. They weren't really exposed to black people when they were growing mm-hmm. up. They were always in uh, white societies and they yeah. always felt that they were superior as a, as a result. And, and, and that's how people should be. But it only took for a conversation. And this person who was, and this uh, musician, I'm forgetting his name, was really articulate and he was... He, he was really smart and, and, and the members of the KKK felt that how can I be superior when he is so articulate, he is so well thought of. Mm-hmm. So how can I really have this assumption as, as such? And yeah. this is the whole thing when you talk about, let's say, flat earth or even uh, people um, who take um, Islam, uh, Islamophobia, uh, Islam to the wrong extent mm-hmm. is because they are, is because I feel they're, they're born with this ideology that, um, Whatever, whatever the whatever the terrorist group puts forward is 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 what's fed to them at a very young yeah. age, and as a result, sometimes I'm not. Uh, let's say that that member of the KKK was was willing to entertain the other side, but sometimes it it just goes to such an extent as you put forward with the flat earthers, flat earthers, that they do, they just feel that whatever they feel is the only way to live life, and 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 what they feel is the correct ideology. And that's why they wouldn't even entertain. So I totally understand that perspective. Yeah. But I mean, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't understand. I don't know which way to, which way we can tackle this because sometimes they wouldn't be willing for uh, a healthy conversation. So yeah, I guess that's, that's something I haven't really thought yeah. about in, in, in depth. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how to, I don't really, I've been thinking about it. I don't really know how to tackle like the, um, the vast differences we have in like the underlying uh, assumptions. Cause like, um, if if you took people from two completely different societies, if you took someone um from from a, a place like China, like as you said when you were talking to um you know to to, yeah. to 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 the Chinese students, and they had no idea about certain things that for you are just so obvious and they're so um um yeah. they're so fundamental. That's I, that's I think where we really struggle to have conversations. It's like when I was um when I was talking to um um to like the the Nazi basically, um it was very yeah. hard for me to put forward arguments when um when when their like belief system yeah, is just so yeah. fundamentally different and i think we just generally i think the important thing um and it's it's only like a you can only really do this on a personal level um is to really yeah. fundamentally analyze and like open yourself up to these conversations and analyze the assumptions that you have within you it's like we as like me as, as someone who's grown up in like in like a western society i have fundamentally yeah. like fundamental assumptions like liberalism is, is like a big part of my of my ideology um and like um and like these these fundamental ideas like that everyone should be equal that like um that you we should treat people like all, all of this sort of stuff is um in, in another society might not be um might not be um as 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 like deep an assumption that people have or like you know with the nazi that all races are are equal like that's a fundamental like distinction that um that that they've grown up their entire lives believing that i just i haven't and i think those are very difficult conversations to have um and the only way you can really um you know have these conversations constructively is for both people to to be aware of the assumptions that they're making be aware that their like your perspective isn't necessarily the the only one out there um and it is it is very distressing um having those key core assum- assumptions um like challenged yeah. if you speak to um like it, it's it's very it's like if you speak to someone because I, I used to be religious and then and, and when mm. people used to challenge me on that like it hurts like really deep because it's yeah. something that's so inherent to you um yeah and and y- you feel like your entire world is tumbling once that kind of one building block is gone um mm-hmm. uh, so i think that it's very important to to like within yourself be able to recognize that like those those kind of key pieces can um can be wrong or like you like those can be challenged and be more comfortable kind of um not necessarily being offended or or or, or uh, personally attacked by you know arguments that people bring forward you know 
so there is one really powerful quote by Jordan Peterson which I which really holds true with me so he says that whenever you walk into a room and you you start uh, you spring up a conversation with 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 the person just mm-hmm. just assume that the that the person you're speaking to is smarter than you so what this allows you to do is that you 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 indulge in the perspective he or she is putting forward mm-hmm. and that really questions where you are coming from because who is to say your ideology is correct right yeah. so and, and as you mentioned with 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 the fact that when maybe i'm not sure if you're so religious or you were religious at the time yeah. you felt that if someone was um, putting forward some uh, counter arguments it, it, it really didn't hold true with you i mean you felt that you were personally attacked because yeah. i, I genuinely because this is Uh, interacting to some religious uh, people and some who have religious beliefs even my mother for that instance whenever i try to put forward an argument to her she thinks that who who really am i to say anything because she's yeah. so much more older than me she's so much uh, see, she's read so much more she's seen the world uh, mm-hmm. to a greater extent that i have so how can i really share a perspective that will uh, maybe broaden her perspective if, if if that is yeah but i feel that if you walk if you if you really just whenever you're going into a conversation or anything if you if you just open yourself to another perspective i think that's that's a really good way of looking at life otherwise yeah i mean it's just dogma that you end up into mm-hmm. and, and and i i don't feel that's that's really good i, I yeah yeah i i think i think honestly as much as i may disagree with jordan peers on 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 a lot of things i think that's a yeah. very very <laughs> very intelligent way of looking um of having a conversation to always treat yeah. the other person with like the highest degree of of, of respect and and yeah. and not because as soon i feel like as soon as you have a conversation with someone who you can tell it doesn't is looking down on you or or thinks you're like stupid or unintelligent instantly like you will get your defenses up you won't like acknowledge their yeah. ideas as much because you, no yeah. one likes feeling like they're stupid no one likes feeling like they course, they yeah. have they have they can't have an opinion on the subject and i think i've even fallen into that trap a lot where i have a conversation yeah. with someone it's usually about politics or economics because those are my like fields of expertise and uh, yeah. i'll be talking to someone who's never studied the subject and i, I will treat them um as if like they're not allowed to like have an opinion or like uh, my opinion is the only yeah, right yeah. one because like obviously you spend so much time studying something if someone challenges you on it you're like you know who are you to challenge me i've read so much more yeah. and that's yeah. i i definitely for, feel myself kind of falling into that trap and it's um it is an issue because those people when i talk to them and they they can tell that i'm not really taking their ideas seriously um they they'll never come away with with um with any sort of um they they won't come away thinking like i'm thinking they they'll double down on their their opinions mm. because you you get your defense up I, if i was speaking if i came up to like a physicist and i was like and i questioned something really fundamental to their um to to um to what you know they know and and they were just like oh you're stupid like it's yeah. obviously this way <laughs> you're not going to you're not going to take that in like you're you're not going to feel great about it And so yeah, I think definitely like I could I could definitely improve on on being more open to to conversations about stuff like that and and being better at kind of putting uh putting my idea forward. And I think uh just generally academics and and scientists could do a better job of kind of um approaching these topics and having very like um being able to uh, explain their ideas and their um and and their research in like a a simpler more more applicable more approachable way for like the general population because there is this growing disconnect between uh the like people who haven't studied topics and 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 you know the experts they don't, there's not that as much trust there you don't really um you don't really necessarily understand what they're saying and it's very easy to disbelieve these people you know no i i totally understand that and i feel that i think everyone every one of us is let's say guilty of that i mean i would say that i mean by you share your examples with economics and politics i would feel the same way if someone questioned me about liverpool football club or, yeah. or about or about football in that sense i'd say that that's what i spend my life doing and that's i i i i watch every second of every game and, <laughs> yeah. and i try to do everything um and my life is surrounded by that but yeah i feel that i feel that everyone is prone to that but just that we have to we have to take a more uh, i'd say a broader a broader approach to things and say that okay maybe just let's just take a step back and say that okay maybe i may be wrong in in how mm-hmm. i may have, i may be looking at things and and i've actually seen this for myself that you'd be surprised to see how many times uh, you'd say that okay you may think you're right but when you actually get into a conversation assuming that the other person is smarter than you you actually end up having a different perspective yeah. and one of the reasons i feel is because and many people have talked about this is that 
when you want to when you want to actually say that you understand a concept or, or a theory or something really well is that when you can actually put that theory down into simple words so that a 5 year old can understand yeah exactly and yeah so when you're actually uh, trying to just deconstruct that whole theory or that concept that you really feel strongly about to this person whom you uh, who um when you're bef- before getting in the conversation you may think that he isn't of your particular industry so you may not know as much but when you actually break it down for him you actually get a lot more uh, things that you pick out because you may think that oh i didn't consider that before but now that i'm telling that to him that's uh, that's something i i i just got to know so yeah. yeah that's 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 a great way to look at things yeah 100% and i think i think we'll slowly um start coming to the end of of this because we've been talking for um over an hour now and uh, uh, and <laughs> just flew by <laughs> yeah i know i know it's really it's really great and um if you you know if if you ever feel like coming on the podcast again like 100% uh, you're welcome we can um we can talk about a, a different topic because i think this was a very in- interesting and um, and kind of like um uh, and and just um and stimulating conversation uh and and yeah just uh, one, once again do you want to shout out your your um just what what your podcast is and um uh, just so just so that people definitely check it out because i'll definitely check it out uh, it sounds really <laughs> interesting yeah for sure much i mean i i really i really enjoy the conversation i had with you and uh considering that both of us go to lafpra i'd really uh, love to have you on my podcast at some point and maybe mm-hmm. we have a sit down conversation in lafpra and uh, it'd be better i guess because yeah. I-, i genuinely feel uh, however much we we believe uh, we really like technology and video conferencing is a really good thing and speaking uh, via the phone is great but i feel that when when we are speaking in person we get we just pick up a lot more things that yeah. we aren't able to through um let's say through technology so yeah i mean i'd love to have you on my podcast at some point and this was a mm-hmm. great time i had with you here we d- discussed about lots of topics main topics i i would have i uh, wanted to speak to you about as well mm-hmm. but i understand the time constraints yeah. but yeah uh, if anyone wants to check my podcast out it's called all walks of life um you could just search for ishan agarwal on youtube uh, the spelling is i s h a n a g a r w a l mm-hmm. on youtube apple podcasts and yeah you can you can find my stuff there but yeah. thanks a lot much it was it was a pleasure speaking to you man yeah it was a pleasure speaking to you too uh, thanks a lot for coming on the podcast and uh, uh, i'll thanks see you in a yeah. bit bye bye